Let's begin this morning by getting one thing out of the way very quickly. Scripture, Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, is not one of our favorite subjects. In third world countries, we sometimes think a little bit differently than maybe we do in uh, the U.S. and in other areas. We think of Easter Sunday as that wonderful day. But remember, I've said before, a lot of folks were there on Palm Sunday and then they come Easter Sunday. We celebrate the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem and then we don't come back until he's resurrected from the dead. But there's a whole week of things that happen. And in those third world countries, the day that is higher than Easter Sunday is Good Friday. Because they identify in the plight of their life and their brokenness and in all the things that they face, they realize that there was one who understood them who came to give his life for them. So if you feel a little bit uncomfortable this morning, just remember it's only one part of the Apostles' Creed, and I believe. But there's a lot that we read and we pass over when we read those words. But there's some wonderful significance that we need to know a little bit more about. It's been uh, one of those things that I can say to you, it's been a little rough in the office this week. A little rough in the reminder for me. And I want you to think about this for you. If you had been the only one, Christ still would have gone through what he went through that you and I might have life. And sometimes we don't always recognize our significance and our great value, but we are valued by God. But there's a problem. Something separated us from God. And Trace, you made mention of that. We were separated from God by sin. And if not for Jesus Christ, there would still be that separation. But we have a way that we can know the love and the grace of God. Let me hit just a couple of phrases from a couple of the earlier sermons. Jesus is one with God Jesus is the incarnate, the Word become flesh. But also remember last week we said Jesus was born of a virgin in his sinless life. That will become even more critical to our understanding when we understand his suffering, his death, and his resurrection. Scripture reading is uh, just a few verses from Matthew 27. Now, I've tried to be kind and considerate for me and for you, uh, especially for those who read and knowing that you're standing for the reading of the Holy Scripture, but we really should have read the whole chapter 27 if you're going to understand a part of that suffering. And yet, in the midst of all of that, uh, there are still a lot of things that we don't know unless we look more at the historical. These are the highlights of what uh, the gospel writer shared with us. Probably best could be pictured by a a piece that was uh, shared long ago from an artist called William Holman Hunt, who in the late 1800s was in the Holy Land, found himself in drawing a particular piece of artwork. And it's a picture of where Jesus is standing in the carpenter shop. His workbench is in front of him, and probably as some of us do, and the other day, the only thing I could say, I was, uh, was writing, and all of a sudden, I got a cramp in my hand, and I know you're saying, you know, <laughs> we don't write that much anymore, but, you know, if you were on a computer or whatever and doing that, but, but to get that cramp, and Holman was, and Hunt was probably at the point that Jesus was needing that break. Standing behind that bench, he stopped, and he raised his hands, to stretch. Hunt's picture depicts the sunlight coming through the doorway. And as Jesus is standing there, there is a shadow that is cast on the wall as if Jesus were hanging on the cross. 
but all through the life of Jesus from his birth through his death on the cross, there was that shadow of a cross that was always there. Remember, from his birth, Jesus was born to die. Jesus was born to die. He said, this is the cause. This is the reason I came. As we think about it in the midst of our lives, we can recognize and probably say, well, there are several questions that come to mind when we do that. And let me see if I can just lift up a few of them. It was Jesus who died. Not the Father, not the Holy Spirit. The second part of the Trinity, second person of the Trinity in Jesus. How did he die? Or how did he suffer? He suffered in body and spirit. Let me just quickly throw some words out to say, not just bodily, but spiritually. All you have to do is think of some of the words that Jesus shared in those last hours of his life when he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. Have you ever said something, do I have to do this? Do I really have to have surgery? You know, the need to surgery is a part of that, but you also know that there's probably going to be some pain that goes along with it in the midst of that, and there may be some suffering as a part of that. But Jesus said also, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Now, I'll tell you, we've all struggled with a part of that, especially when uh, as pa- our parents are as parents, we've had to say no to uh, children or we've had no said to us. No, you're supposed to do this. We don't do that at our house. And sometimes it kind of hurts our pride. Maybe it's something we want to let them do, but we know for the for the good it's part of that. But God, through Jesus Christ, he was saying, God, I want to do your will and your will only. And then probably the words to me that Jesus suffered most spiritually when he asked the question, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Maybe some of you have uh, heard words, something like that. Or at least we've seen it in movies or on television shows. When a parent says to their child, I'm sorry, you're no longer a part of this family. I can't even begin to imagine God wasn't necessarily saying that, but the one thing that God could not do was God could not look on sin. The sin of which Jesus took upon himself. Why did he suffer? Again, it's the anger of God's wrath against sin because God hates sin. Now, I know you may not agree with me, and that's okay. We'll, uh, we can talk about it. But if I read the scriptures correctly, sometimes the church has said, I've probably been guilty of saying that, is God hates the sin but loves the sinner. Well, the scripture doesn't say that. It says those who have not accepted Christ still have that wrath of God. There's a separation. But you have to understand the big picture of what God really wanted, and I'll mention that. But you decide at that point, is it just the sin or is it also the one who continues in sin? He came to give his life for us. Sometimes we recognize that, but God takes no pleasure in evil. He says, with the wicked he cannot dwell. John 3.36 says these words, Whoever believes in the Son of God has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. When did Christ suffer? We think of our lives and he had suffered uh, the entirety of his life. And especially at the end. Let me give you a couple of instances. He suffered by taking on the nature of a servant. Leaving all that he had in God's presence to become a human being. To struggle and to face the adversities a part of that. In his private life, and you may question a part of this, but by taking up residence with his family and living, if you think about it and know the understanding, living in oppression, under rule, and also in obscurity. Very little. You know, to look and see a carpenter, 
not well-known name, family of Joseph and of Mary and all that went at that point, but Jesus suffered some things because of that. You and I know at times, maybe even some have faced that in their life because of the lack of the necessities and the struggles of life. You're here today because you have been an overcomer, but you can remember that day, maybe, or at least your parents can, when there was very little that you had. I remember so uh, so vividly, and I can still see it at this point, my uh, wife's grandmother who grew up during the years of the Depression. And I can honestly tell you, she never threw anything away. There were Cool Whip containers that probably went back to the first year that Cool Whip came out on the market. Uh, anything that was grown in the garden... It was never left to rot away in the garden. It either had to be canned or frozen. And if we didn't do those, then we had to try to eat it all. But a part of that mentality of looking and knowing a time when there was nothing, and if we look at our lives when we come into this world, we come in with nothing. But by the grace of God and His love for us, we recognize all that in Jesus' public life. When he faced his enemies and the conflict that was there, he suffered and he struggled. Remember the words when he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks, and you would not. There was a suffering spiritually at times. Also, remember the scripture says that he sweat drops of blood. No one knows the depth of that. I don't know of any other instance. Maybe there have been those who've done that. But the extreme of the, the suffering so that the body produces blood as sweat. When I think of those things, I might ask the question, why? Well, that's what you already know. So that we might be reconciled to God. So that we might be reconciled because he is that atoning sacrifice for us and our sin. That we might be set free, body and soul, from eternal condemnation. And and gain for us, through Jesus Christ, God's grace, righteousness, and the promise of eternal life. Christ brought about reconciliation with God by his suffering. There are numerous passages, probably too many for me to mention, but... You know they're there. But Romans 5.10 says, When we were God's enemies, we were reconciled through the death of His Son, Jesus Christ. Suffering is a part of that. For whom did Christ suffer? Sometimes there are those who don't know exactly. But we might say, and if we are mindful, we can say that Christ suffered and died for all of humanity. Nobody was left out. It was God's will and God's heart and God's desire that all would be saved. Isn't that what the scripture says? That all. Does that leave anybody out? Not just some. But yet we hear some words sometimes and we say, well, there are those who are the elect. Well, if there are those who are the elect, what of those who are not elected? If there's a group that will and a group that won't, then there's a struggle and not all of humanity is included. The scripture sometimes in some denominations talk about being predestined. Wesley struggled with that to say, well, you know, it's a part of saying you're predestined to heaven. Those who will be with God. And Wesley said, well, if there are those who will be and are predestined for that, there are those who are predestined not to be. Let me give you an example. What if you... What if you lived all of your life with this part of predestined in your mind, all of your life for Christ, and then at the end, miss the kingdom of God? Or the other side, to live one's life any way they want to, and at the last minute, accept the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. Are you in, or are you out? The scripture says these things are written that you may know that you have eternal life. It was because God came for all of humanity. No one is to be left out. 
my thinking sometimes and others again maybe have questioned that and you can question it but it's a place for a discussion is that again it was God's heart and God's desire that all were elected all of humanity was elected that was his desire all of humanity was predestined to be with God but there's one little hitch God gave us a free will and we have to make the choice. It doesn't just happen. It's a choice for us to choose and to accept the gift of God's grace made through Jesus Christ who purchased for us salvation in the midst of that. God gives us that free will to choose. Suffered under Pontius Pilate. You ever ask, well, why did they put that in there? Why did they put the name? Why did there have to be a name? Couldn't you say that he suffered, he died and rose again? Why a name? And why Pilate? Couldn't it have been Herod? It could have been. Could it have been Caiaphas, the high priest? It could have been. But I want you to know that the name Pilate in the Apostles' Creed is of great theological significance. Did you know that? Do you know why? Remember when Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Eden. He was taken to Ananias, who happened to be the father-in-law of Caiaphas. If you go back and look a little bit more at history, you'll find that the high priest, usually considered from the same family, it was almost like a father being a particular politician and thinking that the son is supposed to follow through. Ananias had been the high priest in this particular year. Caiaphas was the high priest, but Ananias questioned Jesus. And then he sent him on to Caiaphas. And Caiaphas questioned him, and then he sent him on to Pilate. If you know anything about Pilate, you can go back and read history. You'll find that the day and time of Roman rule was very cruel. And Pilate was probably at the top of the list. He was all about himself. And not anyone doing. But the scripture says to us that Pilate wanted nothing to do with Jesus. Pilate wanted nothing to do. He wanted to send them back to the Jewish leaders and let them make the decision. But the Jewish leaders wouldn't do that. And when Pilate got ready to send them back, I'm sure they reminded him Probably Caiaphas said, well, you're not a, a very good patriot and supporter of, uh, of Caesar. And I would say Pilate became a little bit concerned. And so he gave the Jewish leaders what they wanted. But in the midst of that, also remember this. What the Jewish leaders were looking for was death on a cross. They didn't have the authority, according to Jewish law, to do anything but stone or to hang. But the scripture, the Old Testament says, cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree. And dear friend, what they wanted more than anything else was to put an end to Jesus once and for all. That people would look and say, this one was not the Son of God. How could the Son of God be crucified and hung on a tree and on a cross? They wanted him done away with, not just for his life, but for even the remembrance of this man called Jesus. And so when Pilate allowed that crucifixion to happen. And with his approval, Rome had the authority to do that, not the Jews. The Jewish leaders got what they wanted. Have you ever had anybody look you in the face and say, I don't want anything to do with this person named Jesus, and I don't ever want you to bring up that name around me again? If you've ever had that to happen to you and you love Christ as I love Christ there's a part of me that hurts and suffers for that one who has refused this love and this grace but Pilate also gives significance 
in a historical setting that this man Jesus did live. Oh, it could have been with Herod or with Caiaphas. They're written about in history. But again, Pilate is there because it was necessary. It was necessary that he would hang on a tree. And you know what happens. What sometimes man means for harm, God means for good. We think of the life of Jesus in the midst of that. We recognize all of those things, but recognize that Jesus was the one who suffered and died. Jesus did not die for his own sins. He died for ours and all of humanity. He took upon himself sin. His life was sinless. That's the reason that importance of the virgin birth, that his life was born free from sin so that he could take our sin. And can you imagine just what would be the weight of the sin of just those of us in this place upon Christ? All the things that you and I have ever done wrong, all of that that we've left undone, which is just as much sin as the other is. But he took upon himself the sins of the world. And they weren't his own. And the reason he did it was so that we could be reconciled to God. I hope when you see those words again and share those words again as a part of the Apostles' Creed, you'll realize that there's something more than just words. There's a life, a life that went by the name of Jesus who came to take away the sin of for you and for me and for the world. When we think about that, how should we respond? Our response is in gratitude because the wrath of God against sin and against the center, sinner was turned into love and grace through Jesus Christ. God has made a way through Jesus Christ for us Romans 5, 8 says that God demonstrated His own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God's wrath through Christ turned to love and to grace. Our response is gratitude. The grace we cannot earn and the grace we do not deserve. We can be reconciled to God. This I believe, do you, suffered, painful, someone who loved us that much, who identifies with all of our brokenness, made a way that we could be made right with God. And yet he longs even today to do the same. And he calls us to be witnesses of that love and grace that we've experienced. Our hymn, its closing song is, Alas, and did my Savior, and Savior bleed and die. Would he devote the old words of the hymn said, Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? And I think now it says, for such a one as I. Well, probably. You don't have to take on that, but if there was a worm, <laughs> if there was a worm, I'm one of them. But he loved me enough to suffer and to die that I might have life. And I will be eternally grateful, not just for this life, but for the promise of the life to come. And that's another sermon down the road. Let's pray. Gracious God, you did suffer. You bled and you died. You took upon yourself the sin of the world and in particular our sin, each of us individually and us collectively, to purchase for us salvation. Lord, a wonderful gift, and when we choose to follow you, 
we know that we accept that gift of grace, the gift that came from God who so loved the world that he gave you his only son that we might have life and have it abundantly and eternally. Lord, if there's anyone here this morning who's not accepted that gift, who is parted by sin or brokenness in their life, may they know that this day, that through your life, your suffering, your death, that you came that we might be free. Thank you for loving us that much. Hear our prayer and be among us now as we finish our time together. Moved by your Holy Spirit, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Would you stand?